Hello student, I am Tanmay Mujumdar. In this video, I am going to discuss some fundamental definitions concerning sampling concept and principles. So in the first slide, I will discuss what is universe or populations and what is sample. First, what is universe or populations? Universe refers to the total of the items or units in any field of inquiry. Whereas the term populations refers to the total items or units about which information is desired. Quite often, we do not find any difference between populations and universe. And as such, the two terms are taken as interchangeable. However, a researcher must necessarily define these terms precisely. We should understand the basic difference between the po populations and universe. So from here we can say all units in any field of inquiry constitute universe and all elementary units on the basis of one characteristics or more constitute populations. The researcher quite often selects only a few items from the universe for his study purpose. All the items is done on the assumptions that the sample data will enable him to estimate the population's parameters. Now, the populations or universe can be finite or infinite. The populations is said to be finite if it consists of a fixed number of elements so that it is possible to enumerate or measure it in its totality. For example, the populations of a city, the number of workers in a factory, etc. Generally, Capital N is symbolized as a total number of finite populations. Now on the other hand, an infinite population is that population in which it is theoretically impossible to observe all the elements. Thus infinite populations is the number of items is infinite. It means we cannot have any idea about the total number of items. For example, the number of stars in a sky. Now what is sample? A sample is a part or subset of the populations. Researchers always select only a few items from the population for his study purposes. The selected all items technically called a sample. In this regard I just give one example. Suppose a researcher want to know the total number of the pharmacy in West Bengal. So that is called universe. Now from here he want to know that how many of them are selling hydroxychloroquine on, that is the populations. Now it is not possible to take a visit each and every pharmacy in all over West Bengal. So definitely they are selecting some of the pharmacy randomly. So that is called the sampling. Clear? Now on the next slide. I am going to discuss what is parameter and what is statistics. A parameter is a characteristics of populations and statistics is a characteristics of sample. So when we work out certain measures such as mean, median, mode or standard deviation from population then they are called parameters. And when we work out that same measurement like mean, median, mode or standard deviation from samples then they are called statistics clear so we know or we already know the population means is actually termed as a mu is symbolized as a mu is a greek uh, alphabet and the standard deviation is sigma and the sample mean is you know already it is x bar it is denoting by x bar and standard deviation is just simple s now in the next slide i am going to discuss what is variable and what is attribute as you know research is basically two type one is uh, quantitative another is qualitative so in a population some characteristics remain the same for all units and some others vary from unit to unit the quantitative characteristics that varies from unit to unit is called variable and the qualitative characteristics that varies from unit to unit is called attribute. So the examples of attribute is gender, race, occupations, etc. The attribute can't be changed 
or manipulated by the researcher as they are inherent part of a person's or object so attribute data is good choice if you are looking at a binary conditions where there are just two alternatives like yes or no low or high etc sometimes the researchers are asking questions that the product will sell or does not sell or maybe the student pass the test or they fail so in that case we can use the attributes on the other hand a variable is not just a number it is also measurable like a height weight temperature or circumference of the circle etc a variable that assumes only some specified values in a given range is known as a discrete variable for example the number of a children pa family and the number of petals in a flowers etc on the other hand a variable that assumes all the values in the range is known as a continuous variable for example the height and weight of a persons now on the next slide i am going to discuss sample design the sample design is a definite plan for obtaining a sample from a given populations it refers to the technique or the procedure the researcher would adopt in selecting items for the sample so sample design may as well lay down the number of the items to be included in the sample that means the size of the sample sample design is determined before the data are collected there are many sample design from which the researcher can choose basically there are the two types of sample design one is non probability sampling another is probability sampling now i am going to discuss what is non probability sampling non probability sampling does not afford any basis for estimating the probability that each items in the populations has of being included in the sample for example deliberate sampling convenience sampling judgment sampling quota sampling in such design personal element has a great chance of entering into the selections of the sample the investigator may select a sample which shall yield results favorable to his point of view for example if economic conditions of people living in a state are to be studied a few towns and village may be previously selected for intensive study on the principles that they can be representatives of the entire states so that is actually called the judgmental sampling which is a part of non probability sampling clear now probability sampling probability sampling on the other hand is also known as a random sampling or chance sampling under this sampling design every item of the population has an equal chance of inclusions in the sample there are a lot of probability sampling like uh, simple random sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling systematic sampling etc uh, so in this regard i just give one example if we have to select a sample of 300 items from a populations of 15000 items using the random number table or conduct a lottery then it is called a probability sampling clear now in the next slide i am going to discuss sampling error and non sampling error sampling error sampling errors are those errors which arise on account of sampling and they generally happen to be random variations in case of random sampling in the sample estimates around the true populations values so sampling error actually is a statistical errors it occurs when an analyst does not select a sample that represents the entire populations of data since the sample does not include all members of the populations so some measurements such as mean median quartile etc on sample generally known as statistics differ from the characteristics of the entire populations populations uh, means which are no which are known as a parameters in this regard i just give one example if someone measures the height of a thousand individuals from a country of 1 lakh 
the average height of the 1000 is typically not the same as the average height of all 1 lakh people in the country. So from this example we can say sampling is typically done to determine the characteristics of the whole populations. The difference between the sample and the population's values is considered as an error. So exact measurements of the sampling error is generally not feasible since the true population's values are unknown. But we can reduce the sampling error by adopting some rules. As you know, the magnitude of the sampling error depends upon the nature of the universe or populations. The more homogeneous the universe or populations, the smaller the sampling error. And also, sampling error is inversely related to the size of the sample. It means sampling error decreases as the sample size increases and vice versa. Now come to the non-sampling error. Non-sampling errors may creep in during the process of collecting actual information and such error occurs in all surveys whether census or sample. So it refers to an error that occurs during the data collection causing the data to differ from the true values. There are different type of non-sampling error. Number one, coverage errors. Coverage errors such as failure to accurately represent all population units in the sample. Or in other words, we can say the inability to obtain informations about all sample cases. Number two is response errors. Response errors by respondents due to for example definitional differences or misunderstanding or deliberate misreporting. Number three, mistakes in recording the data or coding it to standard classifications. Number four, pseudo opinions or false opinions given by respondents. Sometimes they have no opinion. Sometimes they do not wish to say so. Number five, some other errors of collections of data like uh, non-responses or processings or imputations of values for missing inconsistent data. Okay. So finally, we can say sampling error is a statistical error happens due to the samples selected does not perfectly represents the populations of interest. On the other hand, non-sampling error is the error that arises in a detection process as a result of factors other than taking sample. These errors basically arising due to some respondents who are a part of the sample do not respond. It also arises because of deficiency and inappropriate analysis of data. Okay, that's it.